You hear that? That's the sound of the 1591, the FNX1591 uh, disc drive to be uh, specific. Uh, this is a new product released uh, probably, I'd say, uh, announced at least two or three months ago. Um, it began shipping this week. I've got a prototype here, which I'll uh, feature in, 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 a, in a subsequent video. Um, but I'm here today to talk about Super Basic and the way it interacts with drives, both internal SD drive and the external IEC bus devices, uh, should you have any. Uh, simply when you power on the machine, it does a bus scan and it establishes in, in the kernel memory what drives are available. And I will uh, demonstrate simply by using the most basic command, which is DIR, which will give you a directory of the SD card, which is internal. The SD card is on the right hand side uh, next to the joystick ports on the uh, K version of the F256. On the ATX Mini uh, Junior form factor, you'll find it in the rear along with the ports although there are ways to bring that to, to the front. Um, I, I bought one of those inexpensive SD extension cables from, from uh, AliExpress or one of these folk, and uh, it, it's worked out well. I'll, I'll, I'll feature that in, uh, in the video when I talk about the Junior. But here on the, on the K, um, I've got my internal disk. I've also got an external disk, as you heard when I started this video. Um, to switch, I will use the drive command. Uh, drive two, in my case, uh, corresponds to device nine on the IEC chain. And when I say device nine, I'm talking about the uh, numbering nomenclature that Commodore established with the 1540 back in, oh gee, like 1981, I believe. Uh, I'll have to double check that. But, um, you know, in the old days, the devices had drive uh, numbers internally, but there were uh, uh, commands built into, uh, simply gave you access with commands like deload. The, the fact that you had a, a, a device uh, numbered wasn't necessary. But with the IEC bus, things changed a bit. Commodore stripped down uh, the, the basic ROM and the capabilities in order to fit features like color that the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 subsequently you know, included with, with, with the product. And they had to strip some, some things. So uh, the deload, dsafe command kind of lost their, uh, their, their place. On the Phoenix platform, it's not that important. This is just history. The drives and the devices themselves, in order to be compatible with with legacy Commodore prop platforms anyway, need to ad adopt that, that standard, which are drive eight, drive nine, drive 10, drive 11 potentially. Here on the Phoenix, we numbered the drive sequentially from zero to N, where I believe N can be as high as four. Um, and I'll type out on the screen here quickly what we're looking at, but just to, 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 to first show drive two, which is my IEC connected FNX 1591. I'll do a directory here. You hear the disk spin up, and you'll see the contents of the disk. I just have a few files here. Um, so let me just quickly type this in to say that drive zero is the default, and it is the internal SD. I'll say that um, drive one to four are external, um, optional, external, IEC bus, and they correspond to drive uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Similar to legacy Commodore platforms, the, the Phoenix doesn't have any way to um, uh, address or resolve conflicts when you have two devices that are both drive 8. So you'll need to have your devices numbered appropriately. Um, otherwise, you get unexpected results. It's just a matter of the way that the protocol works. The FNX 1591, though, has uh, dip switches on the bottom, so there's no need to open up the box and, uh, you know, cut a, a solder trace, solder on a switch, um, execute a cryptic command. There's a, a simple bank on the bottom, which is uh, clearly labeled, which lets you change the, uh, the, the device address. And in my case, I changed it to device 9 because I happen to have an SD to IEC drive that plugs into IEC as well, and I'd rather leave that at, at 8. I don't have to execute those commands. So uh, simply, we've got the, the drive command, we've got the dirt command, we've got a load command. I'm gonna load a, a quick program here, a small program, pxtlutv1.basic. Finally, I found incorrect spelling, sorry. L-U-T, oh, look what I did there. So I'm on drive, uh, on drive two, this is on drive zero. So I'm gonna change back to drive zero. Load this, complete, I'll list it. Okay, move this up a bit on the screen. You can see this is a program that does something having to do with uh, with with color palettes 
and you can see the color palette on this uh, program because of the of the context highlighting um, is a little bit rough on the eyes depending upon on your eyes and what colors you prefer. In my case, I don't prefer reds, browns, um, I don't know, magenta, is it a pink? Not sure, and, and, uh, and oranges. So I'm gonna run this program. This was written by Ernesto. He threw it together for us, uh, for VCFEs, just to kind of give a, a better experience when looking at, at the program listings against the blue screen. So I demonstrated loading this, fi this file. I listed out the basic program, I ran it. Now I'm gonna save it to uh, something, something in, uh, spelled incorrectly, and that'll be done in just a moment. So that's writing it back to drive zero. Complete. I should also ver uh, mention that there's a verify command, which I won't demonstrate. There's also a, a B load and a B save command, which lets you load and save uh, binary files uh, from disk that selected device into memory at a given address. Um, so that about rounds it rounds it out. Um, the the four uh, load save commands, um, verify command, and the dir command, uh, and the drive command. Uh, these are all documented in the basic manual, um, but there's not really a, a one pager or or a simple overview. Um, maybe we'll work something up. But in the meantime, hopefully this video has been helpful.